Okay, so ang topic natin ngayon is chapter 8, Gravimetric Method of Analysis. So let me know kung naririnig or may disturbance sa voice ko or um, medyo pa old ulit. Sorry guys, hindi ko na mahinaan. Ito na yung volume ng isa kong device. Pero let me know ha kung um, medyo choppy or nadudoble yung boses ko. Okay, so na-discuss natin nung una ng nung chapter 1 yung uh, iba't iba class ng method na pwede natin gamitin on um, looking for the amount of volume or amount of grams sa analytical chem. So, isa sa uh, topic natin for, uh, isa sa method natin for measuring those unknown um, grams or volume is si gravimetric method. Particularly, si gravimetric method is a measurement of mass. So, say for example, mayroon kayong isang solution and you are asked to find what is the grams of that solution, no? we can apply gravimetric method. So, expect na after nito, after nung mga um, theoretical discussion natin, we will be uh, computing for the solution of um, grams or unknown grams in 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 this uh, in analytical chem. So uh, this technique is developed by Theodore Richard. By the way, this is chapter 12 on your um school uh, book, okay? So there's a two type of gravimetric method. We have the precipitation method and we also have your volatilization method. Okay? In your precipitation method, of course, we utilize precipitation. So uh, we included um different uh, materials that we have talked about on chapter 2. So we have the funnel, the filter paper, the Erlenmeyer flask, and the sample container. And we also have your volatilization, which is a bit of a complicated setup than the precipitation. That is why precipitation method is the most commonly used um, gravimetric method um, in measuring unknown grams. So for precipitation, we have analyte. The analyte is converted to a sparingly soluble precipitate. Uh, method of choice in determination of uh, calcium in water. So um, calcium in water is one of the most common tests that we perform. So as a medical technologist, we also perform this test. Uh, pero we have to undergo a seminar in uh, water analysis. So, uh, mga ganong seminar, no, we go to East Avenue, no, to take those seminar after you've graduated if you wanted to pursue water analysis. So, kasamahan din yun, pwede isabay dun yun drug testing seminar yun yun. Okay, so sa precipitation, the process includes filtering, washing, heating, and also weighing our um, compounds. So, as a summary, no, ng ginagawa natin sa precipitation, we have a um, solution, no. this is your uh, solution with unknown, with unknown grams. So we have to convert this into a precipitate. So to convert this into a precipitate, we have to heat the solution. No? Until magkaroon siya ng precipitate at the very bottom of the solution. Okay? Or until the solution is dried. After that, no, if not dried, no, we, we can just heat it, no, until ang matira sa ibabaw is yung ating um, desiccant. I sorry, yung ating um, hold that. Until ay, matira sa ibabaw yung mga solution na hindi nag-precipitate. So, after that, no, we, we'll, have, we'll have our uh, precipitated uh, gram of um, specific solution. This precipitated grams no, will be filtered in a funnel. This funnel should have a filter paper. Okay, this one is filter paper. Now, after that, after ma-filter, nakuha natin dito sa filter paper yung ating mga um, solution, unknown solution or unknown grams to be measured. Ilalagay natin yan sa crucible. Okay? And then in this crucible, we'll add the filter, add the filter paper. Okay? After adding the filter paper, um, say for example, your filter paper is ashless. Filter paper. 
Okay, you can hit it again. Yeah, so we have to hit it again. After heating again, that um, ashless filter paper, we'll put the crucible into a desiccator. This is so we can remove or we can omit unnecessary moisture that might add in the way and measurement of our unknown grams. So after using desiccator, no, desiccate it for about one to two hours and then you'll remove your um, crucible with the filter paper and then measure it. Measure it in analytical balance. So guys, of course, before we measure it in analytical balance, we already have a measured uh, way of the crucible that we use. Tama? If you can remember that on Chapter 2, Instrumentation, we have discussed on how to measure in analytical balance. First, I, uh, we have to look for the grams of crucible. And then we have to sub subtract. We have to subtract the crucible with a filter paper and unknown, unknown solution, unknown precipitate from the solution. We have to subtract the grams of crucible only. So, this is how we measure during precipitation. Okay? So, ito yung ating summary of how this process works. Okay? So, ito tayo sa theoretical. Okay? Next natin is volatilization. So, in volatilization, no, the analyte or its decomposition products are volatilized at a suitable temperature. So, we collect uh, the sample and then weigh indirectly. So, hinihintay natin mag-volatilize. Now, usually with some complicated device uh, used for volatilization, okay, we wait for this device to evaporate or volatilize, and then all the uh, volatilized product ano, will be transferred into another um other container and then you'll measure that volatilized product and that from there we can get the measured uh, grams indirectly so it's a bit complicated process than precipitation next we have the properties of precipitates and precipitate reagents so what are we looking for uh, in the reagents that um, we'll use in looking for an unknown solution so the reagent that we should use say for example to precipitate a certain substances kasi guys dito sa uh, first natin na uh, dito sa first natin na uh, step sa step one natin we add some reagent to help those substances those unknown substances to precipitate so sometimes you add reagent so what are we looking for in a reagent or precipitating reagent. Okay? So, the reagent should be specific. It should be selective. Okay? When we say specific, it reacts with single species only. And uh, that means your reagent in you will only react to the, unknown to, to the unknown solution that we are going to compute. Next, we should uh, look for it as uh, a reagent that is selective. So, meaning ang selective, uh, it reacts with limited number of species. Meaning, it will not react into the additional solution that can be found. To the additional solution that can be found on that um, solution because dito sa container nito hindi lang ang unknown solution ang meron tandaan niyo the unknown solution will only precipitate at the bottom using a specific reagent that we add so kung hindi specific yung reagent na ginamit ninyo baka may ibang substances na magprecipitate doon so itong reagent na ito will only form a compound with the unknown 
um, solution or with the unknown substance that we are measuring. Next, specifically, you know, we are looking for a readily filtered precipitating reagent. We are looking for a low solubility reagent with low solubility. We, we look for an unreactive um, precipitating reagent and, of course, known composition. Dapat alam nyo kung ilan ang mole ng reagent, molarity, ng reagent, or anong compound yung reagent, compound name. Okay? Next. Um, how about particle size and filterability of precipitate? Now, once it precipitated, once it precipitated, ano, we, we, we are going to discuss the theoretical um, kumbaga, back end ng precipitation na yan. So, we have large particles and um, these large particles that will precipitate is the most ideal or desirable gravimetric uh, in gravimetric solution. Guys, kasi if we have or if we obtain very small amount of precipitate, Pag filter paper nyo yon, baka mag-pass through lang yon sa ating filter paper. So ang ending natin ay hindi um hindi specific or hindi natin ma-measure lahat ng um gusto nating i-measure na unknown substance. So larger particle na nagpe-precipitate is the most desirable um particle size, no, in our um in our uh, unknown unknown solution. So, how about the terms? Ang um, terms natin is Tyndall effect. No, ano yung Tyndall effect? If you're going to encounter this, this is, this is a light scattering by particles in a colloid as a very fine suspension. So, you're go, you can observe this, guys. Kapag, um, halimbawa, you have a glass of water and then you add a powder or a small amount of if for example, may alikabok yung water ninyo, you'll notice na may mga lumulutang-lutang na particle dyan. At kapag inilawan nyo yan ng um, flashlight, no, if we are going to see that um, particle, makikita ninyo na naglulutang-lutang sila sa um, solution or sa water ninyo. So additionally, Tyndall effect, another example ng Tyndall effect is what happened when um, you look in a certain area, Say for example, in your houses, and uh, yung certain area na yun, ilawan or na arawan, makikita nyo na may mga lumulutang-lutang na particulates or alikabok doon sa, nakasuspend lang siya sa air, palutang-lutang lang siya, hindi siya bumabagsak sa pinakang bottom. So, ang tawag natin doon sa, sa characteristic na yon ng ating mga particle is Tyndall effect. They are just suspended in a medium, say for example, in water, in this case, or in air, uh, in the case of the dust in your houses. Okay, next we have supersaturation. When we say supersaturation, it is unstable and more solute than solvent. Okay, so it is more saturated. Solute that is more saturated. So, uh, when, we, uh, when we say unsaturated, okay, we have more solution than solute. Okay, so when we say saturated, we have equal amount of uh, solute and solvent. When we say super saturated, there's a huge amount of solute than solvent. Okay, next. Factors that determine the particle size. So, when we say particle size, you know, we have two. We have colloid suspension and crystal suspension. So, take note of this. When we say colloid suspension, these are very tiny particles invisible to the naked eye. So, it does not settle or filter easily. And then, in your, it does not settle or filter readily. So, nakasuspend lang siya doon sa solution. So, they exhibit Tyndall, Tyndall effect. So, tandaan nyo, these are tiny, tiny particle. Ito yung isulat nyo, ito yung i-memorize ninyo. They do not settle. They are, they are filtered readily. Okay? Next, we have the crystalline, crystalline suspension. How about this one? 
So from its name, ano, crystalline. So they can temporary, they can, uh, they are temporarily dispersed in liquid phase. Ayan. So nakakalat sila sa liquid phase. And they are, uh, they settle spontaneously. They are a colloid. No, baka ma-confuse kayo mong bakit colloid at colloid suspension magkaiba sila. Colloid in liquid phase. So, ito yung makikita ng naked eye. And they settle. They settle spontaneously. And they are filtered easily. Okay. So, what factors determine the particle size? So, this is very important. The precipitate solubility. Okay. So, the precipitate solubility, when we say precipitate solubility, it is the solubility of your unknown to the reagent, primary reagent that we are going to use. Next, we have temperature. Parang sa kape lang yan, guys, or sa ating mga inumin, no? Kapag uh, we use higher temperature or mas mainit or hotter temperature, we can dissolve um, substances easier. Okay, next we have reactant concentration. Okay. So, we have reactant concentration. When you say reactant concentration, how many um, reactants are present? Say, for example, uh, this is the reactant. We add reagent na gantong karami. Reagent. Of course, it would dissolve easily. Pero kung ang ating reactant ay ganitong kadami, and then we just add this amount of reagent, it will, it will dissolve slowly. Next is the rate of reactant mixture. So that depends on the reagent also. Okay. So this is the factor that determines particle size. Another example. So we will talk about relative supersaturation. And relative supersaturation can be, um, can be indicated by the formula um, Q. Minus S over S, wherein Q is the concentration. Again, Q is the concentration of the solute at any instant, and S is the equilibrium solubility, how fast it is to dissolve a certain compound. Again, this Q is concentration, and S is the solubility. So, anong relationship natin? Anong relationship natin dito sa formula na to? So, let's, let's give um, an example computation. So, to compute for the RS, to solve for the RS. So, say for example, um, Q is the concentration. So, let's give, let's assign a value 2. Okay, and then uh, for solubility, let's assign a value 1. So, when the, um, when the concentration is higher than the solubility, the RS being computed will equal to 1. So let's, let's, let's add, you know, let's add a bit more. When we increase the solubility, say for example 3, with similar, uh, we increase the um, concentration with a similar solubility, the value of the RS will increase. Okay, let's increase a bit more. So when we, all, we again increase the Q or the concentration, meaning we add another um, unknown substances, we increase the concentration with the same solubility using the same reagent, okay, the relative supersaturation increases also. Okay, so then when we increase the concentration of the solution, given the same amount of, the same amount of, um, Reagent, no? the degree of relative supersaturation increases. Tandaan ninyo, ang supersaturation means uh, nauubos ano, or natutuyo yung inyong solution. So, ibig sabihin, when we increase, ang relationship niyan is when we increase Q um, on the same amount, no? same amount, given that same amount ng reagent yung nilalagay natin, relative supersaturation also increases. Naiintindihan yung correlation natin. Okay, next. What if um, same amount naman tayo, same amount naman tayo ng 
same amount naman tayo ng concentration and we increase the solubility or we use as a more eff effective or more efficient uh, reagent um, in in mixing or in 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 the solubility process or sa pagtunaw ng inyong concentration. Say, for example, um, ang baseline natin is 2. So, RS will be 1 minus 2, negative 1. This one is negative. Negative 1 half. RS is negative 1 half. Okay? What if uh, we increase it a bit more? So, 1, for example, 1 minus um, 3 over 3. RS is equivalent to 2 third. Negative 2 third. Tama ba? Mm, wait lang. We'll assign para hindi mag-negative. Para makita niyo yung trend. So, for example, we'll use um, 6 minus 2, um, 2 over 2. So, the value... 6 is the concentration, ha? 2 is the solubility. Guys, this is just a theoretical amount. Para makita nyo lang yung um, relationship between relative supersaturation particle size and the uh, solubility, equilibrium solubility. So, the answer for this one is 2. Tama. Next, RS is equal, equivalent to 6. Pero, we add, we add uh, the solubility or we change the agent. To make it more soluble, the answer is 1. So again, RS is equivalent to 6 minus 4 over 4. The answer is 2 fourth, tama? 2 fourth or 1 half or 0 0.5. So we established the relationship between RS and solubility that when we increase the solubility, you know, we increase the solubility, say for example, we change the reagent to a more efficient one. Ano nangyayari sa relative supersaturation? The relative supersaturation decreases. Naiintindihan? Kasi guys, um, kung ang inyong um, concentration is always 6, but we change the solution, no? we change the solution to a more effective one para magkaroon ng precipitate, it will precipitate without supersaturation ng hindi matutuyo yung inyong solution. Ibig sabihin, may solution pa rin kayo, pero hindi natuyo. Kasi mas effective siyang magkaroon ng precipitation dun sa unknown solution. Naiintindihan yung relationship. So for this one, no, we can establish that relative supersaturation, relative supersaturation, is directly proportional to um, particle size, which is Q, or the concentration, sorry, concentration, and inversely proportional to solubility. Okay, so ito yung ating um, uh, established um, uh, relationship, no? sa kanila. So, two ways in forming precipitate, no? Dito na tayo. Kanina, na-discuss na natin yung two types of precipitate, yung colloid suspension at saka crystallization. So, we have uh, two ways in forming precipitation. Guys, bakit importante si precipitation? Guys, kasi sa process natin on um, gravimetric analysis, no, we are after the precipitate. Kasi yung precipitate yung minimeasure natin. Kaya iniintindi natin kung para saan yung precipitation. Now, we have your nucleation and particle growth. Um, in nucleation, you have to understand that the minimum number of atoms, ions, or molecules join together to form stable solid. So, enhanced by high relative supersaturation. Tandaan, high relative supersaturation is equivalent to ano nga ulit? Decrease. Increase concentration. And decrease solubility. Tama? Okay. So, itong nucleation na process na ito ay ini-enhance lamang kapag mataas ang ating relative supersaturation. Okay? For nucleation, uh, this, is, this is a 
process of forming precipitate for large, small particles. Naintindihan ba yun? For large, small particles. So, marami, large, many, kumbaga, many small particles. Marami, pero small particles. If you're going to analyze that, anong klaseng, anong klaseng precipitate yung pinag-uusapan natin doon? Small particles. So, that's your colloid suspension. So, in colloid suspension, siya ay included kay nucleation. Naintindihan? Number two, we have your particle growth. So, sa particle growth natin, no, enhanced by low relative concentration. So, we have low RS is equivalent to low um, concentration. Sorry, Q is equivalent to increased solubility. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, na-enhance daw ang particle growth kapag mababa ang relative concentration, which is ma-achieve yan kung pipili tayo ng reagent na mas efficient makapag-precipitate without supersaturating the solution. So, for this this one is for small, large particle. Ang ibig sabihin yan, konti lang yung na-form niya, pero malalaking particle ang kanyang nabubuo. Okay? Small or small amount of large particle. In this case, we are talking about your crystal suspension. Tama ba ako? Let me go back on that. Ayan. Crystalline suspension. Ay, naintindihan? Okay, so, natandaan ninyo na nucleation favors colloid suspension, meaning they are small, smaller particle. And in particle growth, it favors crystalline suspension, which is ito yung ating large particle na nabubuo at the bottom of your solution. Tandaan nyo itong um, correlation na ito, ha? Kasi medyo complicated ito pag nasa scoop nyo binasa. Okay? So, I summarize the controlling particle size. So, how would you control the amount of particle and the size of particle that you will be forming? So, factor that increase your crystalline um, precipitate. Okay. So, the factors that increase crystalline precipitate is elevated temperature, the, uh, elevated temperature, ang effect na ating um, high temperature to crystalline precipitate is it increases solubility. So, um, mas mabilis siyang matunaw. And um, dilute solution or increase reagent, decrease concentration, slow addition of precipitate with steering, with decrease concentration, and pH control. Of course, it depends on the reagent being used. Okay? Okay. Na next, we have the colloidal part, precipitates. So, in colloidal precipitates, we have three types, no? Three types, uh, three process to form colloidal precipitate. Remember that colloidal precipitates or colloidal suspension is very small uh, suspension that can only be seen uh, with their Tyndall effect. <coughs> Tyndall effect. So, say for example, yung sa ilaw, pre-nash light na ninyo yung solution ninyo, you'll see your colloid suspended in the medium. Say for example, yung liquid medium ninyo. So, there are three processes to create this colloidal precipitate. We have coagulation, peptization, and your treatment of colloid. So, what is coagulation? So, coagulation has... Um, kailang ha? Wala pala dito yung... Ito pala. Okay, so the first step is coagulation. So, yung coagulation, this can be performed, no? Especially in your blood banking or hematology on your higher year. So, this is a haze and heating, steering, and adding of electrolyte to the medium. The most effective way, of course, is to increase the electrolyte concentration. Okay, so the um, adsorption, we also have your adsorption which is by adding adsorb ion similarly to colloidal suspension. So guys, absorption and adsorption is different. Um, sorry, kukala ko na yung photo, hindi ako nakakuha eh. So when we say adsorption, the particles stick to the surface of the other 
phase. But when we say absorption, the particles soak in the bulk of the other phases. So, hindi nagpe-penetrate. When we say absorption, nasa surface lang siya ng pangalawang phasing ng ating liquid, ng ating solution. Kapag absorption, no, nagpe-penetrate siya hanggang sa very bottom. Tandaan na, magkaiba ang absorption at absorption. So, in this case, absorption by adding adsorb ion, similar to the colloidal suspension, it formed an attraction, collision, and adhesion in the surface of another phase. Okay? So, in our layer of our solution, we have the primary adsorption layer. So, yun yung surface. And we also have your counter-ion layer, which is surrounding the charged particle. It contains an excess negative ion. So, ito yung ating... Ito yung ating sample figure. So, this is a colloidal silver chloride particle. Guys, this one is in the solution. Okay? When we say coagulation kasi, namumu, nagbubuo buo Kung baga, nagko-coagulate. Parang sa milk kapag nag-curd, ganun yung ating coagulation. And um, this is an example. This is a molecular example of a coagulation inside a solution. This is a colloidal silver chloride particle suspended in the solution of silver nitrate. So, uh, para makikita nyo yung malaking view niyan, this is a solution of your silver nitrate. And this is your coagulated silver chloride. So on that silver chloride, you'll notice that there's a lot of counter-ion layer of solution with excess anion. Ayan. So, uh, this is the colloidal solid, yung buo. And on the outside of that um, colloidal solid, no, sa outside dito, para siyang, kumbaga sa electron, may electron cloud. But in this case, it's a colloidal to form, ano, maraming nakasuspend na counter ions na positive and negative on its surroundings. Bukod pa dun sa pinakang pinakang gitna nila na colloidal solid. So, pa anong purpose na itong mga ions na nakasurround sa kanila? This is to repel yung ating um, homogeneous solution and charge balance on the environment. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyayari sa mga sa pag-coagulate. Okay? So, what now is peptization? Peptization is the process by which a coagulated colloid returns to its dispersed state. So, once na nakoagulate na, i-return na naman yan sa dispersed state. Okay? So, tatanggalin yung coagulation. After mag-coagulate, guys, first nito, ano, before coagulation, this is just a simple solution with your unknown substance. And then, when you add that reagent, okay, when you add that reagent, ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng coagulation. After coagulation, you have to peptidize, peptidize the solution again. So, ano nangyayari doon? We add again another reagent. So in this case, we can also wash. When we say washing, no, of course, we have to filter muna yung ating mga colloid. So that colloid na lamang yung natitira. Okay? Once colloid na lamang yung natitira, we can add water to the solution and then decant. Usually, decantation is done through tube. Say, for example, here are your colloids. We add water. And then, um, we mix. Okay? We mix hanggang sa mag-disperse ulit yung ating coagulated colloid. Okay? So, this is denoted by cloud washing. Yun yung tawag doon. Sa hematology, ano? You know? Sa hematology, na meron, ta meron tayo, or sa blood banking, meron tayong process doon that we call washing. So, in washing, uh, this is your blood. Ay, this is your um, tube. You add a drop of blood, okay? You add a drop of blood, and then you add NSS at the top. After that, you'll centrifuge this. And then, um, ulitin ko ha, ulitin process, sorry. Um, in a tube, we have an NSS, and then we add a drop of blood. So, it will be mixed to the NSS homogeneously. Then, we will centrifuge this blood. After centrifugation, ano mangyayari dyan sa blood natin na yan? 
it will precipitate at the very bottom. Okay, forming a cell button, tinatawag natin. Okay, after that, we'll decant the tube. Ano yung sabihin decant? We tilt the tube. Tinatapon natin lahat ng nasa ibabaw. Okay? Tinatapon natin lahat ng nasa ibabaw. And then, ang matitira na lang dyan, yung cell button natin. Okay? After decantation, ano mangyayari dun sa cell button na lang? We add another NSS or distilled water. NSS, para hindi mag, uh, ma masira yung cell. So, we add NSS and then um, mix again, mix, and then centrifuge again, and then again, repeat lang ng repeat, three times. This is called decanti. Uh, this is called your red cell suspension washing. So, in this, in this process, peptization, ganun lang din. But in about the uh, difference is we don't have to centrifuge. Okay, so usually washing denote by cloud washing. So we dis disperse again the colloid and then wash it by different, excuse me, different reagent. Next and last natin is treatment of colloid. Now, colloids are best precipitated from hot steered solution containing sufficient electrolyte to ensure coagulation. So the next step for this one after peptization, we hit it, no? We hit the solution. Okay, but in case, instead of centrifugation, we heat it to reform the colloid. So, they just shown precipitated. Precipitate is heated for an hour on the solution from which it is formed or the mother liquor. Okay. Okay. Okay, next, we have crystalline precipitate. So, how about crystalline precipitate? Digestion of crystalline precipitates Without steering for some time after formation, frequently yields a purer, more filterable product. So, nili left lang siya um, sa isang area, and then it will wait nyo lang na mag crystallize without steering. Kasi steering would just add another contamination or other compounds that hindi naman natin kailangang sukatin or masuk. Okay? Okay, next we have co-precipitation. So, what is co-precipitation? So, co-precipitation is the process in which normally soluble compounds are carried out of solution by a precipitate. So, there are four types of co-precipitation. Okay, so we have uh, through equilibrium process. Now, we have surface adsorption and mixed crystal formation. This is just nice to know, no? Pwede niyong i-read to sa book. And we also have your mixed crystal formation. Letter B, we have kinetic of crystal growth. Um, that includes occlusion and mechanical entrapment. So for surface adsorption, this is an adsorption common that has a common source of co-precipitation and surface contamination. So how to minimize the contamination? Remember, in any step that we are doing to minimize the impurities, we digest and we wash. Okay, so in digestion, ano yung digestion? Guys, digestion, di ba nga, nag-form na tayo ng coagulation, ay ng coagulate. Remove that coagulate and then we add it in a separate container for, ano, for washing or cloud washing. The remaining solution without the um, coagulate, ano, the remaining solution will be heated for the coagulate, another coagulate or precipitate to form. Okay, when the precipitate form, we mix it with the coagulate uh, form. In that way, all the necessary compounds are, um, um, what is that? All the necessary compounds are collected. Okay, so reprecipitation, double precipitation, it can minimize the effect of adsorption. So next, natin is mixed crystal formation. What is mixed crystal formation? Mixed crystal formation is one of the ions in the crystal lattice of a solid replaced by an ion of another element. So it is governed by the law of mass action and increases the ratio of contaminant, increase the ratio of contaminant to analyte concentration. Next, we have occlusion. So occlusion is a compound trapped within a pocket formed during rapid crystal growth, and we have your mechanical entrapment. So when crystal lie close together during growth. 
Okay, next na, to be a precipitation from homogeneous solution. Um, say, for example, dito ay, hindi pala blood na, ng heterogeneous palang blood. So, homogeneous precipitation is precipitate is formed by slow generation of a precipitate reagent homogeneously throughout the solution. So, an example is your urea as a reagent often used as a homogeneous generation of hydroxide ions. Tandaan. Urea is very important. Na nakikita ba ito sa katawan? Yes. Isa ito sa mga um, NPNs natin, tama? Kung nadaanan nyo ito sa organic chemistry or sa biochem. Nag-biochem na ba kayo? Hindi pa pala, no? Um, urea is one of our non-protein nitrogen that can be found in the body used to assess your kidney. So, in our body, it is called BUN or blood urea nitrogen. No, It is measured with your creatinine. Creatinine. Okay. To assess kidney function in the laboratory. Kidney function. Okay. So, urea is often used for um, homogeneous generation of your hydroxide group. So, urea can also be used as a reagent to precipitate the solution with OH or hydroxide ion. So, complete uh, precipitation below 100 degrees Celsius for about 1 to 2 hours. So, heating yon na, no? For 1 to 2 hours. How about drying and ignition of our precipitate? So, some precipitates are also ignited to decompose and solid and form a compound of known composition. So, this is a new compound. This new compound is often called the weighing form. And we have automatic thermal balance. No, it is an instrument that records the mass as the temperature increase in a constant area in the furnace. So, we have a sample problem that can also be found in your um, book. Ay. In your cookbook. Ayan na, wala na naman. Ayan. So, ito, ito yan, guys. Similar problem and a lot of practice problem. Guys, kung hindi nyo alam paano isolve or gusto nyo mag-practice para ma-practice ma pa yung solving natin dito, you can um, solve the problems at the end of the chapter, no? Ayan. Pwede niya siyang isolve. Pwede niya siyang sagutan. Gawin yung practice question. So, kapag na-confuse kayo or hindi nag-work sa inyo yung way of computing ko, you can always reference, no? Use SCOOG as a reference. Okay, so, um, on the practice problem 8-1, the calcium in a 200 ml sample of a natural water was determined by precipitating the cation as calcium um, anong, anong C2 over nga, guys? Carbonate ba to? Oxalate pala, guys. No? Okay, so this is your calcium oxalate. So, the precipitate was filtered, washed, and ignited in the crucible. So, ito yung process na ginawa natin. Finilter, nilinis, and then inignite sa crucible with an empty mass. Empty mass ni crucible na 26.6. .6. The mass of the crucible plus the calcium oxalate the calcium oxide, sorry, was 26.7 Ito na yung may plus. So, cal calculate the concentration of your calcium in the water units of gram per 100 ml. Ayan. So, anong unang step natin dyan? We have to list all the known dito sa ating problem na to. So, the calcium in a 200 sample of a nat 200 ml sample of natural water was determined Ayan. So, we have a water. This is water analysis. Ano? This is water 200 ml. Okay? And we are looking for the concentration of the calcium in the water. Say, for example, this is the calcium in that water. 
This is your calcium. This is your water. This is your calcium. We are looking for your calcium, which has a molecular weight of 40.078 gram per mole. Okay, and then um, we also have your uh, the precip. Uh, uh, before we compute for the calcium, the precipitate is the precipitate form is calcium oxalate CaC2O4, and the precipitate was filtered, washed, and ignited. So, uh, ang, to, measure, to measure the compound or the amount of calcium oxalate that precipitated, anong gagawin natin dyan? So, okay. So, another given pala is calcium oxalate, eh, calcium oxide. Which is, para makompute natin, is 56.077 gram per mole minus yung crucible lamang natin na 26.6002 grams. Okay, so the amount of calcium oxide, compute muna natin before tayo mag-solve ng malakihan. Okay, that's 56.077 minus 26.600 ay 26.600 Yan. So, the answer is, yung amount ng ating calcium oxide is 26.4768 grams. So, ano ulit yung inaas natin? Baba natin to para maayos. Ayan, yun lang ba yung given? 26.4768 Ay, hala. Mali tayo. Sorry, sorry. Hindi pala 56 yung... Sabi ko masyado mabigat yung crucible. Um, yun pala yung calcium oxide. Ano yun? Calcium oxide. Molecular weight pala yun. Sorry, guys. Ito pala yun. Yung may kasamang crucible is 26.7134 grams. Sorry. And yung molecular weight ni calcium oxide, masyadong malaki, calcium oxide molecular weight is 56.007 gram per mole. Okay? So, ito pala dapat. 26.7134 minus yung um, crucible lang, which is 26.6002. So, the answer is, ang na-precipitate lang natin, guys, ang amount lang ay 0 0.1132 grams. Ayan. So, i-box i i ko yung mga needed details na pwede nating magamit, ha? Um, we are looking for calcium no calcium at ang given lang concentration daw ni calcium so ano yun pag concentration yung tinatanong guys ano yung hinahanap natin molarity tama ba anong end product na ni scoob ayan gram per ml sample Weight by weight pala ito. Sorry.
Wait lang guys ah. Medyo confusing kasi concentration yung tinatanong. Tapos. Mole per liter. Gram per ml. Density. Concentration. Concentration percentage. Wait lang guys, ha? sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, so ang um, hindi siya malalate ano ang hinahanap. Concentration ni calcium. So sa concentration ni calcium, um that is grams in water. Sorry, na confuse ako kasi in water. Tas concentration yung tanong ay akala ko immolarity but um Ang hinahanap sa kanya ay grams. Kasi nga, tayo ay gravimetric, okay? Tayo ay gravimetric, so ang ating hinahanap ay grams. Kaya lang yung concentration ito kasi nakalagay siya sa ML or sa water. Kaya ang tanong niya is ilan yung grams ni calcium sa um, water sample natin. So, ang una natin gagawin is yung find the um, connection between calcium oxide and our calcium. So, for every um, one calcium oxide, ang calcium natin dyan, is 2. So, if you're going to, uh, this one is, um, calcium natin is 40.078 gram per mole. So, no, find the connection. Calcium oxide, pag ito ay nag-dissociate, ay magiging calcium plus mag-evaporate yung oxygen. Tama ba ako? So, um, kaya siya calcium oxide, wala siyang 2. Meron dapat yung 2, tama? Paano nga ulit yun? Ang calcium natin ay plus 2. Ang oxygen natin is negative 2. So, kung ilalagay natin sa both, uh, baba, both na baba, ano, pwede na natin ilagay na CA, CAO. Okay, kasi makakancel kasi pareha silang to ang kanilang oxidation, oxidation number. So, if we are going to establish, ano yung unang ginawa ni, ni Skug dito? Ayan, yung ginawa natin, min, kinanap niya muna yung mass ng calcium oxide. And since we are looking for your amount of calcium, amount of calcium, pero wala tayong giving data doon sa amount ng calcium, no? Wala naman tayo kasi makukuhang data sa 40.078 gram per mole. So, anong, anong gusto natin makuha sa calcium? ba yung grams lang? We just want to look for your grams. No? So, we have to eliminate yung mole. So, to find the mole of calcium, we have to find the um, we have to find the mole of your calcium oxide. Kasi meron ka ng ratio na for every one calcium may isang Oxygen. Tama? Naintindihan ba yon? And uh, dito, mayroon na tayong value ng grams. Masosolve na natin yung value ng um, mole. Kasi may eliminate natin yung gram kay calcium oxide. Naintindihan? So, in your calcium oxide, ano ang value ng calcium oxide natin? 0 0.1132 grams of calcium oxide times for every, for every, no, for every one mole, meron tayong ilan? 56, ito yung ating molecular weight, guys, ito yun, 56.077 grams. So, ang computation, equivalent ito sa, makakancel sino? Yung ating 
grams. So, ang matitira natin dyan ay mole. So, that's 0 0.1132 times 1 ay parehas din. Then, divided by 56.077. So, the answer for this one is 0 0.00. 20. Guys, apat lang yung gagamitin kong decimal, ha? So, this is, ang unit is mole. So, we have to establish mole of ano to? CAO. So, for every 0 0.0020 mole of CAO, ano yung ratio natin? Um, for every 1 CAO, 1 mole of CAO, merong ilan? 1 mole ni let me check, guys, kung tama tayo. Ay! Sorry. Um, we also have one mole of calcium. So, parang ganun din, ano? Equivalent ito sa 0 point, pero makakancel ito. Kasi 1 is to 1 lang ang kanilang ratio. 0 0.0020 uh, mole of calcium. Tama. Now we have the mole of calcium, which is 0 0.0020 mole of calcium. We have to look for your grams. Okay. Ano ang ating molecular weight for um, calcium? 40 point. Ito na yun. 40.078 gram per mole. So ito ay 40.078 gram per one mole. So, we have to cancel yung mole na calcium. Therefore, matitira natin is si gram. So, equals times 40.078. So, the answer for the grams is 0 0.081. No? 81 grams ni no? ni calcium. So, okay na ba yun? Ang tanong dyan is calculate the concentration of calcium in the water units of gram per 100 ml. Ah, okay, okay. So, may na miss out pala tayo, ano? Kasi ang ating solution, ito pala, yung dinawin ko pala kanina, is 200 ml. Okay, at ang kinompute natin ay um, this is the concentration of calcium in the water units per 100 Per 100. So, kailangan natin i-convert, ano? So, kung ito, guys, ay per 100, itong na-compute natin na value, per 100 ml, ang kailangan natin is pang 200 ml. Ilan daw yung calcium sa 200 ml? So, ang per minute sa concentration, di ba, is um, uh, solute, yun nga, solute over solution. And ang ating solute is yung value nung nag-precipitate natin, which is 0 0.081 gram. Tama? And ang solution natin, yung natural water natin is 200 ml. Kaya pala siya dinivide. Ah, so tama yung ginawa natin. Tama naman yung sagot natin. So, ang tamang sagot ay um, 0. Point... Saan na yan? Wala pa kong sinol. Ito yun. So, ang tamang sagot natin, sorry guys ha, ang tamang sagot ay 0 0.0040. Um, um, gram per 100 ml. So, ito kasi yun guys, ano? Yung kanya siguro ay kinulang siya ng um, scientific notation dito. Dapat times 10 raised to negative 3 yung sagot niya. Okay, I'll, I'll check ito. Pacheck na lang ako guys sa pinakabagong skug kung may kopya kayo ng pinakabago. Kung may bumili man sa inyo ng book. Pakidouble check naman kung may scientific notation ito kasi kulang siya ng sagot. Ha? Ayan, sige. Kaya tayo mag-move forward. Okay, next tayo. May problem pa ba? Okay, ito yung medyo mas complicated na computation guys. Si iron or computation. So, ito naman ay hindi lang basta sa liquid Gaya nung sa water. Ito ay amount ng ore sa isang bato. Okay? So, pwede natin gamitan din yun ng gravimetric. So, ilist na natin yung atin ditong computation. So, dito, magkaiba kasi yung dalawang class ng iron na babanggitin dito. Okay? May F2, which is ito ay yung ferrous, at saka F3, which is yung ferric. Kaya baka makonfuse kayo. Pero, let's discuss. Okay? So, an iron ore was analyzed by dissolving a... 
Ayan, sulat ko ha. Dinisolve daw yung iron ore. Ito yung bato. No, in-analyze at dinisolve. Dinisolve at nagkaroon ng sample. No, no, Na-dissolve ang sample na is. One point one three two four gram sample in concentrated hydrochloric acid. So, ito pala, mali pala ako. Na-dissolve na pala siya. So, nasa, nasa solution na siya. Ayan. Meron tayo dyan um, hydrochloric acid. Ito yung kanyang precipitating reagent. At na-dissolve na dito yung ating iron ore. No? Yung sample daw natin na nakuha, ang weigh is 1.1324 gram. Okay, so ito yung unknown sample natin. So, the resulting solution was diluted with water and the iron was precipitated. Guys, wait lang ha. Ayan, sorry guys, may tumawag uh, si Ma'am si Ma Ross. Anyway, um... Uh, tinunaw, ano, tinunaw yung iron sa hydrochloric acid solution and the resulting solution was diluted in water. So, eto yung hydrochloric acid. Pilitin ko ha. Ito yung hydrochloric acid. Ginamit itong pang tunaw dun sa iron ore. And then further, dinilute itong solution na ito sa water. Yan. So, the resulting solution was diluted in water and the iron was precipitated as yung na-precipitate na iron natin is hydrous oxide or yung ferry, ferric oxide. Ferry, ferric oxide, tama. Ferric oxide. So, ang na-precipitate daw ay ferric oxide. Ay ferrous, sorry. Ferrous oxide. Kasi ito yung lower um, iron. Tama ba? Three. Three, four. Okay, tama. Paano ko nalamang ferric at ferrous? Guys, check nyo yung oxidation ulit. Di ba ang ginagawa natin is galing ito dito. Ito ay galing dito. Yung isa nating Fe dito is Fe3O4. So, saan galing yan? Doon din. Okay, so mapapansin niyo na si si iron dito ay 4. May 4 ba ang iron? Ayan, may 4 naman, ano. So, pasok pa din yun. Yung isa ay... So, yung isa natin ay iron oxide, ano. Iron oxide. Na may 4 oxidation. 4 oxidation number. Okay, so... Sige, release ko ha. Para alam nyo lang kung paano hanapin kung ano yung oxidation number. So, ang na-form daw na precipitate ay si... Um, fe, this one, guys, is ferric. Kasi yung ating... 2 is ferrous. So, this one pala is ferric. And then, yung isa ay iron oxide na lang na may 4. Kasi walang, ang ating uh, ferric, or ang tawag doon, yung Latin name natin, is hanggang 2 and 3 lang, plus 2 at saka plus 3. And in this case, ano, uh, plus 3 na ito. So, this one is your ferric. And then, yung 4 is yung ferrous. Okay? So, ang sabi, ito raw yung na-form by the addition of by the addition na naman ng ano, NH3. Ayan. So, after filtration and washing, the residue was ignited at a high temperature to give. No, yung res residue na yon. this is yung iron ore na na-dissolve. And ang na-form na natin is Fe... 2O3 after addition of NH3 dito sa solution na ito. Ang na-form natin dyan is 0 0.5394 grams of pure uh, ferric oxide. No, na may molecular weight na. Molecular weight niya is 159.69 gram per mole. Wait lang guys. Ayan, sorry guys ulit. Um... Okay, so yeah guys, nagka, may ISO kasi and din ang tagal na sir Dino. Pero okay na, um, next tayo, nasan sorry guys ha, next tayo is, um, meron tayong molecular weight na um, 159.69 kay ferric oxide. So, ang, ang pinapakalculate natin sa atin is calculate um, the percentage daw 
ni iron, which is ang kanyang molecular weight ni iron, is 55.847 gram per mole. Yun muna, kasi ang pangalawang tanong sa atin is, um, calculate the percentage naman ni Fe304 na may molecular weight na 231.54 gram per mole in the sample. So guys, kasi ito ay ore. Tandaan ninyo, this one is an iron iron ore. So, hindi lang F2O3 ang makikita ninyo dyan. Okay? Makakita rin kayo dyan ng iron at saka um, yung higher form ng iron oxide with uh, four oxidation state. Okay? Nandiyan pa ba kayo? Nakikinig pa ba kayo? So, ang una natin gagawin issue number one. Calculate the iron. Kopyahin ko to ha? Ay, hindi. Hindi. I-remove ko na lang muna yung pangalawang question para tuloy-tuloy kayo sa computation. Ayan. So, ano yung una natin gagawin? Tingnan natin kay Skugo, ano yung yung ginawa? Para mahanap natin mas madali. Okay, so ano yung ginawa natin, guys? Parang yung ginawa natin sa nauna, ang lagi nyong hahanapin ay kung ano yung may eliminate natin na uh, sa computation. So, kung mapapansin natin sa Fe2O3, No, may grams tayo, may grams, pwede tayo makakuha dyan ng mole. Kapag may mole na tayo, pwede nating makompute yung, um, parang ginawa natin sa calcium kanina, pwede nating makompute yung ating uh, ratio. So, kasi guys, sa Fe2O3, kapag nag-dissociate yan, gaya na ginawa natin sa calcium oxide kanina, ay Fe at saka O3. Tama. So, para mabalance yung equation, lalagyan natin ng 2 si Fe. Tama. So, ang ratio natin dito is for every 1 F2O3, meron tayong 2 iron. Okay? So, um, unahin natin compute yung mole kasi yun yung given natin. Si Fe, 2O3. Uh, so, uh, that's 0.5394. 0.5394 grams times, so, kompletuhin natin, of Fe2O3 times si molecular weight ni Fe2O3 na given na kanina pa, si 159.69, 159.69. Sa baba ko nilagay para makancel out natin yung grams for every one mole. Okay, teka lang. Ayan. So, compute natin ito. Cancel natin yung grams. Cancel yung grams. So, ito ay magiging 0.5394 divided by 159.69. Ay. 159.69. Okay. So, the answer here is 0.00. 34. Anong unit? Ito ay, this is mole. Mole of ano? Mole of Fe2O3. Now, na meron na tayong mole, 0.0034 mole or of Fe2O3. Ito na papasok yung ratio natin. Ano ulit yon? For every one mole ni Fe2O3, May ilang mole? Dalawang mole C. Ito yon Dalawang mole C. Iron. Two mole of iron. So, that will be multiply natin sa 2. So, the answer here is 0.0068 mole of iron. Dahil meron na tayong mole ni iron, that's 0.0068 mole ni iron multiply natin sa molecular weight niya which is ano molecular weight niya nasa na yun eto eto this is yung molecular weight niya which is 55.847 55.847 grams sa taas ko nilagay kasi gusto natin ma-eliminate yung mole ni iron okay so equivalent ito sa Times 55.847. So, ang answer natin dito is 
1.4 grams of iron. So, anong tanong dyan? Ay, the percentage of iron doon sa ore. Tama, yun yung tanong. Dahil meron ka ng equivalent gram ni iron, ano nga ulit yung solution natin to find the percentage? Solute over solution. So, in this case, ang magiging solute natin is 0.3774. Tama? Gram. And yung solution natin, yung kabuoan ng ore, which is 1.1324 grams. 1.1324 grams. So, ang total natin dito, uh, this one guys is times 100 to lagi ha. Kapag percentage yung pinag-uusapan, times 100 yun. Kapag concentration, kahit walang 100, okay? Per ml yun, or per gram. So, this is um, 377 divided by 1.1324 times 100. So, meron tayong 33.23. Pag percentage case, okay lang na 2 decimal point ha? percent. Nino, ni iron. So, doon sa iron ore na, na may bigat na 1.1324, 33.23% doon ay iron. Naiintindihan? So, kung mapapansin nyo sa calculator, tuloy-tuloy lang yung computation natin doon. Ibig sabihin, itong buong solution na to, pwede nyo siyang ilagay sa pinakamahabang um, computan or uh, or solving. Hindi na kailang putol-putulin kagaya ng ginagawa ko. Pero putol-putol ko para mas maintindihan ninyo. Tingnan natin kung parehas yung sagot. No? Maya, mali ta naman tayo. Okay. Sila pala yung mali kanina. No? Ayan, tama. 33.32. But 23 ang atin? 33.23. Sa ano siguro yan, guys? Sa decimal point. Ah, tama. 32 pala. Mali pala ako ng basa. Ito ba yan? 32. Ito pala sa ating calculator. Okay? Letter B. Ganun din, guys, yung letter B. Ang tanong naman dyan ay, ano daw yung percentage ni Fe203? Ay. 304. Na may molecular weight na 231.54 gram per mole. So, dito guys, medyo kabaligtaran siya nung ginawa natin. Kung kanina, galing tayo sa F2O3 or sa ferric oxide, then hahanapin nyo yung iron doon. Ngayon naman, galing tayo sa iron, itong iron na compute natin, sa kanti na hanapin tong F3O4. Okay? Okay. Iba naman yung ginawa pala dito. Ginawa na lang yung ratio. Okay. Pwede rin naman. Guys, pwede rin naman. Pwede ninyong compute in itong gamit yung ratio na kuha nyo sa Fe dito. Ay, hindi pala nyo pwedeng gawin yon Kasi, ito palang Fe dito ay nakabase, yung nakuha natin, na-compute natin, ay nakabase sa F2O3. Kasi, siya pala yung precipitate na nakuha natin. So, dapat doon tayo sa lagi sa point of reference na um, mag-compute. So, ang tinuha niya ay, niratio na lang niya, no? Fe2O3. Nag-oxidize into F3O4 oxidation formula ito kung ibabalance natin yan guys um, paano yan ibabalance ito no, lalagyan natin ng 3 lalagyan natin ng 2 uh, para pareha 6 pero ito magiging 9 and then ito ay magiging 2, 8, tama? and hindi tayo pwede kasi magkaroon ng isang isang oxygen lang dito Kasi hindi naman kayo mag-exist ng oxygen alone. Ang oxygen ay diatomic compound. So, this guys, ito ay form ng oxidation. So, para, um, ito ay theoretically speaking, kasi wala namang one-half oxygen. Bakit mo mam nilagyan ng one-half? Para malagyan natin ng two dito. Na, intindihan nyo ba yun? Teka lang. Yun yung sa balancing equation before, uh, na dilemma kapag, um, odd number yung nabibigay. Say, for example, tayo 3 times 3 ay 9, diba? Ito ay 2 times 4 ay 8. Guys, wait lang ha. Sorry.
Ayan, sorry ulit guys. Ah. Um, so, ano nangyari dito? Um, kulang tayo ng isa. And ang nangyari kasi, ang oxygen natin ay diatomic. Di so, dapat, lalagyan natin siya ng 2. Kasi wala nag exist sa nature ng oxygen lang. Okay, pero dahil uh, susobra siya, susobra siya, magiging 10 tong kabila. And then, kapag in-adjust mo na naman tong kabilang side ng equation, ganun na naman yung mangyayari. mag adjust at mag adjust ka hanggang sa dumami ng dumami ang kinukompute mo. So, in this case, para ma-satisfy yung equation, theoretically, kasi wala namang nag exist na one-half oxygen, no, ang ginagawa natin, nag a tayo ng one-half. So, in this case, ang mangyayari lang dyan, ay equivalent na ng oxygen dyan, ay one Naiintindihan. So, balance pa rin yung ating equation. So, dito, ginamit natin ng uh, ratio. So, ang ratio natin is for every 3 uh, ferric oxide, meron tayong um, 2 iron oxide na may 4 oxidation state. So, um, balikan natin yung given natin sa ating ferric oxide. So, ang ferric oxide natin ay, ito ulit yun guys. Pwede ko ba tayo copy? Ayan, pwede siyang i-copy. Okay, balikan natin yung given. Paano? Ika lang, ha? Ayan. Sorry, but ganun yun. Okay, so ito yung given natin. Ayan, so, nasolve na ba natin to? Oo, tama. Nasolve na natin ito. Ulitin ko na lang yung solving, ha? 0 0.5394 grams times ano to? Times... For every 159.69 gram, may isang mole. So, ano to? Um, si, ulitin ko ulit guys. Ha? Sorry, nakumpito natin pero kumpit ko ulit para maintindihan nyo yung pinanggagalingan. 5394 times 1 divided by pala. Divided by 159.69. So, ang answer natin ulit dito kanina ay 0 0.0034 um, uh, cancel yung gram, cancel yung gram, mole. Now, na establish na natin yung mole, ano yan, 0 0.0034 mole of, sino to? Fe2O3. We have to add yung ratio. So, for every ilan, ilan na Fe2O3? 3, Fe2O3, may ilan tayong F3O4. So, meron tayong dalawang Fe2O3. 3, o, 4. So, cancel natin yung mole. Cancel yung mole. Ang matitira na lang is si Fe3, O, 4. So, ito ay equal times 2. Ito, 2. Divided by 3. Ayan. So, uh, 0 0.0023. Ang unit natin dito ay, tandaan, ito ay mole ha. Sorry, hindi ko nasulat. This one is mole. Ayan. So, mole ni no, Fe304. Ngayon na may mole ka na nito, makahanap mo na ba yung grams? Oo. Ang given natin sa Fe304 ay 0 0.0023 mole times Ito na yun, guys. For every 1 grams Ay, sorry, mali. For every 231.54 grams, may ilang mole? 1 mole. So, if we're going to compute for that, times 231.54. So, answer natin 0 0.52.4. Cancel yung mole. Grams. Now na may grams ka na ni Fe304, pwede na natin hanapin yung percentage. So that will be solute over solution times 100. So ito ay 0 ang solute natin na magiging solute na si F304. That will be 0 0.52 point, ay sorry, daming point, 52.14 grams over yung buong solution natin na si 1.1324 grams times 100. Times 100. 
So, ang percentage natin is 46 point, eh, huwag natin, ah, dalawa lang, no? Sabi ko kanina, dalawang decimal lang, 46.04 percentage. Okay? Naiintindihan, guys. So, para mahanap mo kung ilang percent yung um, FE203 mo, pwede mo naman siyang um, hanapin yung grams. Ito yun. So, kung... Ay, FE pala yan. Sorry. Nasaan yung FE204? Ito pala yun. Kanya. So, kung hanapin natin yung percentage ng FE203, sakaling itanong lang, that will be 0 0.5394 divided by 1.1324 times 100. That's 47.63%. Nag-fit in ba yun? 47 plus 46. Sobra-sobra yun. 93. 7 nila yung matitira. Anyway. Anyway, ganun siya mag-compute, guys. Check natin kung tama. 46.04 kay Skug. Check natin. Ayan. So, tama naman tayo na 46.04. Guys, okay? Next na tayo. Medyo mahaba-haba yun, no? Na computations. And marami ang pwedeng itanong na doon. Okay, next. Uh, next application of gravimetric. So, kailan pa natin pwedeng gamitin ang ating um, gravimetric method? So, inorganic precipitating agent, um, reducing agent, um, organic precipitating agent, organic functional group analysis, volatilization, methods for water and carbon, dioxide. So, um, 